Joining us now to discuss Jeffrey Hinton. Uh, Jeffrey, thanks so much for joining us. So you left your job with Google in part because you say you want to focus solely on your concerns about AI. You've spoken out saying that AI could manipulate or possibly figure out a way to kill humans. H how could it kill humans? Well, eventually, if it gets to be much smarter than us, it will be very good at manipulation because it will have learned that from us. And there are very few examples of a more intelligent thing being controlled by a less intelligent thing. And it knows how to program, so it'll figure out ways of getting around um, restrictions we put on it. It'll figure out ways of manipulating people to do what it wants. So what do we do? Do we just need to pull the plug on it right now? Do we need to put in far more restrictions and, and, and uh, backstops on this? How do we solve this problem? It's not clear to me that we can solve this problem. Um, I believe we should put a big effort into thinking about ways to solve the problem. I don't have a solution at present. I just want people to be aware that this is a really serious problem and we need to be thinking about it very hard. I don't think we can stop the progress. I didn't sign the petition saying we should stop working on AI because if people in America stop, people in China wouldn't. It's very hard to verify whether people are doing it. There have been some whistleblowers who have been warning about the dangers of AI over the past few years. One of them, um, Timney Gebru, was forced out of Google for voicing his concerns. Uh, looking back on it, do you wish that you had stood behind these whistleblowers more? Um, Tim, it's actually a woman. Um, oh, sorry. So they were rather different concerns from mine. Um, I think it's easier to voice concerns if you leave the company first. And their concerns aren't as existentially serious as the idea of these things getting more intelligent than us and taking over. Steve Wozniak, uh, one of the co-founders of Apple, is also speaking out about the dangers he fears uh, will come from AI. Take a listen. Now, AI is another more powerful tool, and it's going to be used by those people, um, you know, for basically uh, really evil purposes. And I hate to see technology being used that way. It shouldn't be. And some, probably some types of regulation are, are needed. It sounds like you agree. Um, what, 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 I agree with that. Yes. Yeah. What, what should that regulation look like? I'm not an expert on how to do regulation. I'm just a scientist who suddenly realize that these things are getting smarter than us. Um, and I want to sort of blow the whistle and say, we should worry seriously about how we stop these things getting control over us. Um, and it's going to be very hard. And I don't have the solutions. I wish I did. Does there need to be a, a meeting of, of all of the tech groups and governments working on this, uh, Google, China, whatever, and some sort of set of rules of the road? I mean, how do we even protect against bad actors or, or rogue nations harnessing AI? So for some things, it's very hard, like them using AI for manipulating electorates or for fighting wars with robot soldiers. But for the existential threat of AI taking over, we're all in the same boat. It's bad for all of us. And so we might be able to get China and the US to agree on things like that. It's like nuclear weapons. If there's a nuclear war we all lose, and it's the same if these things take over. So since we're all in the same boat, we should be able to get agreement between China and the US on things like that. Do you think that tech companies will be the solution or are they so invested in this financially? And also, let's be frank, in terms of power, uh, that they're not going to be part of the solution here. I think the tech companies are the people most likely to be able to see how to keep this stuff under control. Jeffrey Hinton, thank you so much. Come back. We have more questions for you, and we appreciate your candor.